As your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, some people will assume you're guilty. But that did not stop her from refusing to answer questions about the tax bureau's targeting of conservative groups and her insistence that she has done nothing wrong. Tonight, new information. She's coming back. We have Fox team coverage. Doug McElway looks at Lerner's record, which may have foreshadowed the current uproar. But we begin with Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel on Lerner's brief appearance on Capitol Hill today. Good evening, Mike. Well, good evening, Brett. The star witness bailed out early, but lawmakers still had plenty of questions, about six hours worth, trying to get to the bottom of the IRS targeting conservative groups. I've been advised by my counsel to assert my constitutional right not to testify or answer questions related to the subject matter of this hearing. The head of the IRS's tax-exempt organization's office had been accused by House Oversight Leadership in this May 14th letter of lying or misleading Congress. Lerner revealed on May 10th in response to a planted question that the IRS was targeting conservative groups. Today, before leaving, she defended herself. I have not done anything wrong. I have not broken any laws, I have not violated any IRS rules or regulations, and I have not provided false information to this or any other congressional committee. That statement made South Carolina Republican Trey Gowdy furious. She waived her right to Fifth Amendment privilege by, by issuing an opening statement. She ought to stand here and answer our questions. In Cincinnati, Fox 19 reports six employees have been identified as targeting conservative groups, all with different managers and territory managers above them, suggesting this was not restricted to a small, unsupervised group. The IRS conducted its own investigation a year ago, which found a substantial bias against conservative groups, but a House oversight aide says it appears that revelation did not lead to any IRS employees being disciplined. Today, Deputy Treasury Secretary Neil Wolin testified this was an IRS problem. There is no indication that Treasury was involved in the inexcusable behavior at the IRS, and Treasury only learned of the fact that the IG was conducting a review after the unacceptable conduct had already ended. The committee's top Democrat went after the former IRS Commissioner Douglas Shulman for saying in March 2012 there was absolutely no targeting taking place and then not correcting the record. At the time I learned about this list, I felt I was taking the appropriate um, actions and that my course was the proper one, and I still feel that way today. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, that's simply not good enough. You personally knew there was a target list. A leading committee Republican asked I mean, the former IRS commissioner if he had discussed the targeting sure during 118 visits to the White House. You sure you didn't bring it up with anybody at the White House? Not to my memory, and it wouldn't be appropriate, um, and so I certainly believe I did not have any conversations. At the end of the hearing, Chairman uh, Darrell Issa said his committee isn't through with Lerner. So although I excuse Ms. Lerner uh, subject to a recall, I am looking into the possibility of recalling her and insisting that she answer questions in light of a waiver. As Congress continues investigating, the American Center for Law and Justice, which represents 27 Tea Party groups, is preparing to file suit on behalf of many of them. Ten of their organizations have their nonprofit status still pending, while two withdrew due to extra scrutiny. Brett? Mike Emanuel, live on the Hill. Mike, thanks. Let's take a close at the woman of the hour, Lois Lerner. Tonight, correspondent Doug McElroy with some background indicating this is not the first time Lerner has been suspected of playing fast and loose with the rules. Now under the protection of her lawyers in the Fifth Amendment, Lois Lerner is facing a maelstrom that began earlier this month at an American Bar Association conference when she apologized for the IRS's targeting of conservative groups. Lerner, why didn't you answer the they used names like Tea Party or Patriots, and they selected cases simply because the application had those names in the title. She said she hadn't revealed the information sooner because she was never asked. But just two days before the ABA conference, Lerner was specifically asked about the investigation. So, Ms. Lerner, if you could comment briefly on the status of the IRS investigation into these political uh, non for profits, I'd appreciate that as well. Well, there was a questionnaire that began this discussion, and there's also a questionnaire out there that is seeking information from Section 501c4, 5, and 6 organizations. Congressman Crowley later called her answer evasive. Uh, the bottom line is you cannot lie to Congress, and you cannot be evasive, and you cannot try to mislead Congress. In the 1990s, Lerner served as Chief of Enforcement at the Federal Elections Commission. Under her direction, the FEC undertook the largest enforcement action in its history, suing the Christian Coalition for violating campaign laws. The Christian 
and Coalition won, but in one deposition, FEC lawyers asked a defendant if televangelist Pat Robertson prayed for him. James Bopp was the Christian Coalition's lawyer. Well, I was shocked and appalled and, and uh, frankly white hot uh, over it, even though the, uh, hopefully the deposition doesn't reveal uh, that. Uh, y you know, the, uh, both political activity and religious activity are specifically protected by the First Amendment. When Bob learned years later that Lerner had been promoted to an IRS position, he became concerned. She was being, in effect, promoted uh, for what she had done at the Federal Election Commission and now was going to be expected, in my, my, what I was concerned about, uh, expected to replicate that at the IRS and now we know that's exactly what happened. Lerner is represented by lawyer William W. Taylor, who is noted for winning a dismissal of all charges against former IMF Director Dominique Strauss-Kahn in a high-profile sexual assault case. Brett? Doug, thank you.